scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. God is raising mighty man in this place God is raising man of fire in this place God is raising man of power in this place he won't stop he won't stop till you look just like him he won't stop no he won't stop till my life looks like him he won't stop so i won't stop till my life looks like him he won't stop he won't stop hallelujah hallelujah i want to pray for you before you sit Hallelujah. My heart has been stirred to just pray a prayer for you and then we'll sit down and charge ourselves. You see, please look at me. There is a kind in every life, there is a kind in every territory that does not go except by prayers. He said, This kind, this kind, this kind, this kind of mountain, this kind of problem, this kind of evil this kind of limitation this kind does not go except by prayer i want to release a grace that will stir up watchmen and watchers upon your land there are people who must access that mantle and that grace even this morning for a land that is barren of men and women who understand the art of the altar is a land that will be a place of invasion for darkness i'm praying for you now i want you to bring out those people for me in the name of jesus i stretch my hands and i pray by the power that raised christ from the dead the mantle of the watcher after the order of anna the prophetess may that grace rest upon you now take that grace now take that grace now please bring them out in the name of jesus i release that grace upon you men and women in the name of jesus christ the spirit of intercession the spirit of prayer the grace to travel for territories for nations for churches and for families i impart that grace upon you bring them out in the name of jesus just gently help them so you don't injure them please whether you are an usher or not just help those i want to pray for them Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take a coat, touch my lips. Here I am. 
take the cold Touch my lips Here I am There are many of you who will pray revivals Upon the southeast Pray revival upon your territory Again I'm praying for you May that man to find you May that grace find you O daughter of Zion O son of the kingdom May that grace find you Right now as I pray for you May that man to rest upon you Man of prayer After the order of Elijah In the name of Jesus Christ May that grace rest upon you After the order of Elijah By this prayer ministry, God will be taking away shame and reproach from many, many people's lives. Don't be distracted. You've taken the pain and the sorrow away. You've given me peace undeniable. No need to cry cause you're always with me You're my father, my everything Oh, may my Oh, may my You don't have a cloth or something There should be people with that kind Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and say, Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Bring this gentleman for me. This man, come. I don't know who this gentleman is, but you will be mightily used by God. Mightily, mightily used by God. There is a very strong grace upon this gentleman. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands and I pray for you. May this grace rest upon you. I shift you to dimensions in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be a new season. I lift up the lead from your life and in the name of Jesus, begin a season with the Spirit that will announce you to the nations. In the name of Jesus, one prayer and then we'll be seated. Whether you are in front here or you are there, Lord, in this end time, use me. I am available. Someone pray. Someone pray. I submit to the dealings of the spirit. I am available. I am available. In the name of Jesus for all of you who are out here I pray for you the grace that will grant you the ability to endure the dealings of the spirit until you emerge as men and women of fire I release that grace upon you now in the name of Jesus particularly for those of you in front I stretch my hands may that grace be activated from within your spirit man in the name of Jesus Christ that it will not just be a show that you came out under the anointing and then return back and nothing changes indeed let this be a new season by the spirit of grace for in jesus name we pray 
please be seated those who can go to their seats help them those who are under the anointing just just let them when they are fine they can stand up my head thou was exalted like the horn of a unicorn and i am anointed with fresh oil your head he has anointed like the horn of a unicorn and i am anointed with fresh oil bring two people for me who will run out under the anointing now please help them so they don't injure themselves is the spirit of grace there is a kind of consecration god is bringing them into my head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn i am anointed with fresh oil oh, oh, oh. Just leave them where they are we'll speak over them in the name of jesus please don't be distracted there is an activity of the spirit happening here this is how men are made this is how men are made i'm seeing fire coming on the head of two people just two people that fire blazing fire coming upon their heads hey. The refiner's fire. have the miracle service in the night and I will pray for you but there is someone who is receiving this is not a fresh impartation it came before but for some reason something happened to your life a strange order of the healing grace that healing grace that healing grace it had come before but something happened i'm praying this from the depth of my heart the fire that brings healing to the nation My friend, the gentleman wearing the maroon cloth, lift your hands. I'm seeing oil come on you. Let it be a new season for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands towards you and I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord is opening a new page in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the living God, so let it be for you. So let it be for you. So let it be for you. Please sit down. Our time is gone. So I'm just going to give you a 10 or 15 minutes charge and then we are done for this morning session or thereabout. I want you to be sensitive because many impartations are going to be happening. God is strengthening the hands of the vessels, the men and the women of God. One of you among you people wearing white in front. I'm seeing fire coming on one. There's one of you right now as I'm speaking. I just saw that light. Hello, Imadona. Hello, Imadona. Hello, Imadona. 
Madonna Father be glorified let no flesh glory in your presence in the name of Jesus Christ pray and ask the Lord to speak to you in one minute father speak to me in Jesus name just to share a thought with you and we'll be ready who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle amen who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle amen for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen 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 yes to the new dimensions amen 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 Amen, 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 amen. Amen. One more time. One more time. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated it is my desire that every pulpit and every altar in this city that it becomes a place of fire a place of doctrine a place of making a place of bread even the hallowed bread of the Spirit that everybody who finds his way to the house of God in the east and indeed in the southeast that it will be for sure not minding whichever church but that you are sure that you will encounter the God of the Bible and that something will shift this is one of the ways we preserve the heritage of the spirit within a territory I have taught you this in one of the conferences that there are many ways we preserve revivals and the move of God we must be able to capture and preserve the program of God as assigned to a territory hallelujah praise the name of sometimes you do not plan to take it this way but the spirit of God just comes in a way that we have to submit to his wisdom and his dealings we're people of excellence and organization but not at the detriment of the lordship of the spirit he's called the lord of hosts so when he comes we submit to what he's doing so that he can make so that he can build in the name of Jesus 
that gentleman from where you are the second row that one yes no you don't have to touch him I'm just praying for him in the name of Jesus you are entering a season of pruning in the spirit and from that pruning will come the birth of something mighty and precious in the spirit I'm praying for you that in the name of Jesus Christ you will step into a new level of intimacy with the Holy Spirit virgin dimensions in the spirit God will bring you into those realms and you will begin to walk in power and grace like never before in the name of Jesus Christ what is ministry let me just charge our hearts what exactly is ministry because many people say i am a minister a music minister a minister of the gospel i am a deacon i am an usher i am an apostle a prophet a teacher so we say we are in ministry but what exactly is ministry i want you to listen very carefully colossians chapter 4 and verse 17 paul was speaking to his son in the gospel Archippus, and he said say unto Archippus." that you take charge of the ministry that you have received in the Lord that thou fulfill it take charge you have received a ministry not from the Lord in the Lord and it says that you ensure that thou fulfill it all over the world there are several people who want to be used by God and we have captioned um, the experience where a man is used by God to serve his purposes as ministry and we are right except for the fact that most people have no idea whatsoever mine is just to help us and for some of us maybe refresh our minds and for some of us to add a new concept and an idea of ministry from a biblical standpoint God okay sorry I think maybe the battery also just help me with the volume now so several people talk about ministry the first thing I want you to know please look up ministry has nothing to do with a pulpit ministry has nothing to do with holding a mic necessarily ministry has nothing to do with a man standing before people to speak to them those are only tools that help you to do ministry ministry has nothing to do with a congregation a church Ministry has nothing to do with a title, an apostle, prophet, teacher, music minister, psalmist, whatever it is. If you do not understand this concept of ministry, you will already miss it. Are we together? According to scripture, ministry is defined by two indices. Number one, your motivation. And number two, the goal what qualifies any spiritual activity to be called ministry is number one the motivation that sponsored that activity and number two the intent or the goal please write it and don't forget so you do not define ministry thank you you do not define ministry by the activity for many believers we define ministry by the activity so I'm standing behind a pulpit right now and talking to a people who are lending me their attention and we believe that that is ministry not necessarily is it possible to not have a pulpit and not have a congregation and still be in ministry is it possible to not raise one sound in singing and still be in ministry I'm helping to redefine our concept and our idea as as to the concept of ministry so I said that ministry is measured by two biblical indices number one your heart the motivation behind what you are doing and number two the goal are we together never forget that according to scripture any activity qualifies to be called ministry if the motivation is your love for Jesus and your desire to see him glorified please write it down 
any activity whatsoever qualifies to be called ministry to the degree to which it is motivated by your sincere love for Jesus and intended to reveal and glorify him so your preaching only becomes ministry if your standing on this pulpit is motivated by your love for Jesus and is intended to reveal him are we together your singing only becomes ministry if it was motivated by your love for Jesus and intended to reveal him you can be a musician but not a minister you can be a preacher or a communicator and not a minister sadly and unfortunately ladies and gentlemen there are many people around the Christian circles who are not in ministry they are in spiritual activities well-intentioned activities but not ministry when we check it using the indices of scripture it does not pass the test your heart and your motivation are we together there are many people you've heard me say this and I will say it until Jesus comes there are many people who got into what we know as ministry because of frustration every other aspect in their life did not seem to work and they just feel well since everything is not working let's just go to let's just you know um, get some church or get something and start ministry do you know why your motif is important because your motif is also your staying power whatever motivates you to get into this spiritual adventure becomes that which sponsors you through it if your motivation is money or fame or your motivation is to be a celebrity or to be one who is appreciated and celebrated across the world you see the lifespan of your efficiency will be until that goal is achieved the moment the goal is achieved there will be no fire and impetus to push further again are we together now when our fathers got into ministry their motivation was not most of the things that motivate us are uh, you know the younger generation now their motivation for many of them was sincere love for God in fact many of them would tell you they fought the call of God upon their lives and ran away they ran away until God dealt with them and they came and finally surrendered but for us even without calling us we run to him which makes it suspicious there was something the father saw they saw the enormity of the sacrifice and the demands they knew it would cost them and that's why they ran away notice that when Jesus came and began to call on the disciples you see the speed with which they followed him they did not follow him because they loved him who will not follow a celebrity someone who shows up in town and is healing the sick he's turning lives around I will want to be part of that team that works so many of them came and became his disciples you would notice that eventually when Jesus troubled the entire Roman government the disciples started having problems among themselves who was the greatest they started murmuring among themselves we don't understand what this man is doing it's like there is no court for us in this thing he is just the one shining alone and we are following and helping him and they got angry one day and someone summoned courage to ask Jesus he said we have left all to follow you we won't hide it again it will not be a rumor we have left all to follow you what is our court in this and Jesus looked at them with compassion but discerning their intent and he said no man who has left cars houses mother father for me and for the kingdoms he said but he will receive in this life these and that and that and in the life to come life eternal many people get into ministry today for wrong motives some of the motives may be sincere there are others who get into ministry because they are a group of friends and everybody there was called so they naturally feel since we pray together I must be a minister too there are people who get into ministry because they are frustrated and they feel like things have not worked and so let me justify my value by getting into ministry others get into ministry because they hear that they give men of God honorarium and they can bless them one person can come and carry an SUV and give you one person can give you a building why labor to pack 
and accumulate the money for cement and sharp sand when I can be in ministry and in a moment someone can give me a duplex or give me a mansion and some of this corrupted motif please look up is the reason why many people are not dedicated to the work of the ministry do you know why because they have nothing to lose it was a tool they were going to use for themselves it was never about God are we together when I am not passionate about something and I do not see the relevance of that activity I don't fear losing it are we together the absence of dedication in ministry tells you the motif was corrupted from beginning because when you understand that this is about the will of God and that which pleases the heart of the father and brings him glory for you it becomes a serious issue it's no longer an issue of convenience you will bend and stretch and inconvenience yourself with honor knowing the motivation behind it when I started my walk with God you've heard me and I will continue to tell you this I had no bargain with God whatsoever if you do this I will do this if you do that it was a blind hunger and a pursuit for him in fact the pursuit was not even for ministry the pursuit was to love him genuinely oh I can dwell on this issue of loving God ladies and gentlemen prayer warriors men of power you will never access certain levels of spiritual power and grace no matter how long you fast and pray you've heard me say your love for God vetoes your prayer life vetoes your fasting life vetoes every other thing you can perform correct spiritual activities from a corrupted motif love for Jesus I submit to you that up until today and for as long as I live there is absolutely nothing that will take its place in my heart are we together if there is one secret about my life I can tell you second only to the mercy of God is my love for him ask him ask him there is a realm where prayer warriors cannot go beyond there is a realm where fasting giants cannot go beyond beyond that realm it is a love affair no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it been revealed to any man what God has in store for them that love him nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus you're the cup that will run dry treasure of my heart and of my soul it's in my weakness you are merciful redeemer of my past and present wrong you're the holder of my future days to come I will lose ministry a thousand times close down everything that I'm doing today and I stand before the God of heaven to tell you that cancel every ministration and return back and sit down if that will be the proof of my love for Jesus see believe me I have taught you a few principles but I don't claim to know everything but there are a few things I know and I can tell you one of them is the protocol of God's presence and power activity never leads you to his power it is relationship activities are only valuable if they become tools that transport you the business of power and the business of relevance is a business of relationship you see when you come to a native doctor please look at me when you come to a native doctor and you tell him I want power for whatever a native doctor does not need to know your name a native doctor is not interested in relationship he just tells you what do you want I want to win this election and he says okay let me ask the gods what will be the requirement and they say okay they've answered me go and bring two goats is that true 
go and bring one bag of millet add hundred thousand bring my own honorarium as you are coming he's not he does not care you don't even need to know his name in fact you don't even know the need to know the location because that that zone of result is governed by activity but when you come to God and say Lord I want power he pushes your hand away and says this is the secret to my power my heart my son give me your heart many of you have given him your prayer life wonderful but that is not enough many of you have given him your ability to fast wonderful but that is not enough many of you have given him dedication in bible study loving god is more than reading your bible loving god is more than being diligent to pray loving god is more than fasting and denying yourself the pleasures of this world you can do all of that and yet not love god is someone learning now yes the foundation for ministry is not just learning church growth principles as powerful as they are i do not downplay them but everything in this kingdom is powered by your love for jesus not just your love for god because god can mean anything including yourself the one factor that most people have missed out is that there is there is a a, a severe level of corruption in their motivation what has led many people to climb the pulpit what has led many people to wax albums what has led many people to set up prayer groups what has led many people for various shades of motivations but i'm bringing your mind to that one aspect that if it goes wrong nothing else you are doing will mean anything to god again love it looks like a very simple principle that is why you find out you can go for a church growth conference and learn every principle they can tell you pray you will pray they can tell you fast you will fast they can tell you study you will study they can tell you you know evangelism and you will do everything and still it does not work it's like buying a beautiful clock and not finding the battery that powers it you will hang the clock and get angry and say no the clock is not working then you will go and buy a more expensive clock still without battery then you will go and buy a giant standing clock still without battery i wonder what is making it not work what you bought is wonderful but the battery that powers it is not prayer the battery that powers it i repeat is not fasting it's not bible study the battery that powers it is love the zenith of your relationship with Jesus Christ is not knowledge is love are we together I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold I wouldn't trade you for riches untold yeah. you are you are my everything you know with all humility people meet me all the time and they say apostle what is the secret i've done everything i know to do i've been sincere and sometimes i look at them and i know they are right they are like the rich man who came to jesus good master what do i do to inherit eternal life he said and Jesus said do this and that and he said I've done that from my youth and he said this one thing thou lackest he said go and sell all you have <laughs> most of you think the language of love is just the language of affection uh -uh. the language of love is beyond affection the language of love is the language of death it is the language of sacrifice your love is not authentic till death becomes part of it are we together when you say i love you lord for many of you mean you mean i'm emotionally endeared to you that is absolute nonsense in the realm of the spirit because physically when a man says he loves a woman you know a husband says i love my wife 
in many regards it just means i'm emotionally connected or endeared to you so we ship in that same concept and we say lord i love you i know you know i love you and god says i don't know i'm watching i'm watching when i told you i love you i did not stop at a statement i sent jesus to represent my love and everything jesus did was motivated by love so when you say you love me i say okay you have called my attention i am watching and for 10 years he keeps watching and you say i love you and he says no it is beyond words are we together yes let me tell you this there are four indices that measure love in this kingdom paul was mentoring the church and he told them to know the height the length the depth i will run through them very quickly number one passion the first biblical index to measure love is passion you cannot love anybody and anything without having passion passion is the fuel and the fire that drives you ask two people who are in love and they are not lying to themselves there must be passion is that true ask a man who tells you i love my business i love what i do there must be passion so as a man of god if you say i love jesus he's watching for the index of passion when you say i love my congregation they are watching for passion passion is what drives you to make sure there is no sunday service that is without a thoroughly vetted life applicable spirit inspired truth to teach god's people when you come on sunday and you say don't worry you know i just returned from a journey i'm so tired no you do not love them love is measured through the index of passion are we together number two commitment commitment is the staying power regardless of uh, whether it is convenient or not this is the major problem with the christianity in nigeria is the christianity of convenience don't let my love grow cold i'm crying out light the fire again don't let my love grow cold i'm crying out light the fire again i need your discipline i'm crying out light the fire again commitment watch this when you watch an elderly couple and you see a man who probably is suffering from stroke and the man cannot walk well he's shaking and yet his wife is holding him and introducing him and saying ladies and gentlemen you've not met my husband that is not passion again that is commitment are we together commitment many of us are passionate but we are not committed commitment means even in your tears is a covenant to stay uh, whether it is convenient or not is not the issue living is out of it the bridge has been burnt commitment how i love to worship you I want you to listen to this song how I love to stand for you and even though it hurts me for every step I take and even though it pains me for every move I make but I love you I can never ever do without you I love you I can never ever do without you I love you I love you I can never ever do without you and even though it pains me for every step I take and even though it hurts me for every move I make. Listen, you have not seen love until you find commitment. 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 Lord, I am here. 
you will find me here when the dust comes you will find me here when laughter comes you will find me here when there are no members you will find me here when people misunderstand me you will find me here as for me and you it is a salt covenant bound to you by a covenant that is non-emotional this generation of preachers are celebrities not people who are servants of the most high when it is convenient and wonderful if you will see me on social media then yes Lord if I will have access to a crowd of people then yes Lord if my name will be known Joshua Selman then yes Lord index number three if it is genuine love there must be pleasure it is not all about pain when Jesus died he was exalted and coronated on a throne if your walk is full of pain alone something is wrong there is a pleasure dimension because in the Bible you can taste and see that the Lord is good are we together so when you say I love you Lord that means my life must give you pleasure and I also expect sincerely that from this love relationship there be pleasure two people cannot be in love and it's all about pain and passion there has to be room for pleasure so when the gentleman buys the lady a gift on her birthday she smiles and she's happy she will prepare a nice meal for him and is happy when a husband surprises his wife buys her a car or a house she's happy she didn't marry him for a car however it is part of the definition of love within that sphere are we together yes finally the fourth index which is the major one that measures love the highest biblical index that measures love is sacrifice sacrifice ah. i'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life i'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life lord i'll be here loving you it's all of the days of my life i'll be here loving you all of the days of my life go and read your bible and see what happened to those who love god even in the presence of death they said death you are too small this relationship is deeper than the flesh can i tell you the truth you see i come from the north with all due respect even though i know that everywhere in nigeria we face our share of persecution but for many years I was in Zaria and that is like it's like the 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 the, the, the northern the, the Zaza Emirate I have met many crises in my life I have seen many things that would have discouraged me to just run away and say listen let me just go abroad or go somewhere after all when you travel you see travel with the anointing and the grace it's not a charm that you drop it but I made up my mind whether it works well or not I remember a time when I was going for a ministration years ago I'm encouraging you and will pray am I wasting your time I had passed to Kaduna on my way to Abuja to board the flight that leads to that location because it was at the time where you know the terrorists were disturbing that area it was Meduguri I was going to so men of God were not agreeing to go there because it could cost you your life and justifiably so I mean people would not just throw away their families like that and the people needed that encouragement and I promised them that I was going to come so I was on my way going when I got a text by the airline and they said sorry the, the flight has been cancelled you know the tickets are still open you can use it for another you know flight somewhere or whatever it is 
I remember looking at my driver, who was a Muslim man, a Friday afternoon. If you know anything about the north, Friday afternoons are no good times. A wise man will not be loitering around unguarded areas at that time. And I remember I asked him and I said, can you drive to Meduguri? I can't disappoint these people. And he looked at me and he said, let's go. We turned from Kaduna and we we're on our way. I passed Kano just one hour after I passed Kano when there was a bomb blast and they declared curfew. We were driving in the night and we already, we did not know what to expect. When we got to Portiscum, it was in the night. Military people had to stop and say, something is wrong with you. Every other person who comes must stop. There is fight going on there. And you people are coming there. I slept in the car in the night till morning. And I remember placing my head with mosquitoes and the rest. It was not because of poverty. I said, Lord, I love you. See, nobody comes out of nowhere. Did you hear what I said? Behind every story, behind every glory, they say, there is a story. I cannot begin to tell you if you know the things to God be the glory. But ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, to believe that being used by God and demonstrating your love for him will not cost you is you deceiving yourself. I cannot tell you the times when I returned back from a trip because you know being in Zaria then you could not easily access flights. I would return back sometimes six on the dot. Koinonia is already on and forget about the issue of food. Just to quickly take my bath, rush and with passion in my heart. Lord, it's a privilege and an honor for me to serve your people. When I'm done, I'm counseling up until 2 a.m. in the morning. I return back by 4 o'clock and bathing again. I have to be out to catch an 8.30 flight in Abuja. I did this for many years. I did not stay at home for good two weeks in a year. Why risk yourself like this? Are you that desperate about the people? I'm saying this because don't say God trust me with men. Do you love him enough to lay down your life and bend over backwards? I know that you have learned. There are many things about ministry I don't need to tell you. You are learned enough. You have attended conferences that have taught you. But we are dealing with this love issue. Emoji. Forget your title. Let's discuss the love issue. That when everything fails, membership, sermons, conferences, if this one thing is standing, then you are standing. I don't care what else is standing. Ladies and gentlemen, if that love aspect goes down, everything about your life has gone down. I want you in one minute to lay your hands on your head if you can and say, Father, renew my love renew my love and my passion for you please make it sincere from your heart renew my love for you renew my love for you renew my love for you renew my love hallelujah please look at me in Jesus name Paul the Apostle wrote in your Bible that you read the many things that happened to him. Apostle Paul was not just a great man. Today we celebrate him to thirds of the New Testament. Go and read how many times he died. He told you in suffering, in pain, he said, what shall separate us from the love of God? And he begins to list a lot of things. There are many people just because somebody said, I don't believe in you. You say, I'm leaving ministry. What brought you in the first place? That small a reason? <laughs> Just because you were not invited for a meeting or a conference. Look at the petty reasons that people give for not being passionate about the things of God. It is because that love factor is not there. Are we together? No, a member annoyed me. I won't preach again for three weeks until everybody comes to beg me. Abba, 
so God's people will suffer for 21 days because you have a personal problem with one person go back and check your love life are we together all that I long for is found in your love you are everything You are the thirst You are the stream You are the hunger living deep inside of me You are the food that satisfies You are provision for the journey of my life everything listen when I placed my hand on this floor I told the Lord Jesus either you will come and meet me walking or I will meet you with honor as for me I died sins sins and since it is appointed unto men to die only once died sins died to your reputation die to your whatever it is my one commitment is the cross before me the world behind me and you press and march like a warrior even afraid of death I will live long by the grace of God but if this will cost me my life then so be it many people talking nonsense I am apostle I am prophet they hear the sound of a gun and they are running what <laughs> emoji can you stand and look at everything and say instead of killing all of them let me go we're discussing ministry of end time ministry it's not a ministry of convenience it's a ministry that will test the sincerity of your passion when we started out we used to sing songs like i pledge allegiance to the lamb it was not a nash it was not a special number people would stand up and stand like a national uh, um, a national anthem with all i am i will seek to honor your command i pledge allegiance to the lamb church in enugu please hear me if it becomes just about money or titles or reputation and I'm saying this from a heart of love or competition who is more anointed than who who has more revelation than this who prophesies more than who then you are aborting the purposes of God in this end time you must love God a way enough to shield those things apostle you don't know who offended me there's one man of God across listen can you for the sake of the kingdom throw away that and focus on the excellency of that which brings glory to the heart of God are we together this fight for members this one took my members this one who is whose member this one did this one do you know I'm being sincere with us this morning because if I teach you on church growth you have heard it if I teach you on prayer you have heard it I teach you on revelation you have heard it this love aspect there is a lot of pretense and hypocrisy in the body of Christ is why we are not able to access genuine power can you love him beyond your reputation he called me Joshua Selman where did he keep the apostle does he know I really met Jesus okay sorry sorry he forgot can you focus on the assignment on that which is greater and bigger than your reputation listen by reason of what I do in ministry, I have, I have seen God do mighty and great miracles, but I have also stood before many dead bodies. And one of the lessons I learned when I stand before a corpse is the brevity of life. The hymn writer says, life at best is very brief, like the falling of a leaf, like the binding of a sheep. And he says, be in time. Is that true? 
the way we carry all this life my reputation my honor you don't know who i am i will show you all that thing is distracting us and while all of those those ego driven practices are going on souls are dying believers are not being mentored and matured those who must serve the purposes of god in ministry must be people who love god enough can you take the blows and the wounds and say say lord if it's for you then i do not mind this is my message for you this morning and it's already affecting younger ministers who are coming you go to many campuses right now there is there are different shades of rivalry this man of god is a giant in prayer this one is a giant in these two of them are fighting themselves they have their own camps like politics and look at the nonsense these are young boys who have not even started but they are learning it from somewhere are we together the purposes of god is bigger than who you are or what you are or what you have if i die today the purposes of god will not stop i am too small a reason and a factor to make that happen i am calling on you this morning beyond the desire to stand behind the pulpit beyond the desire to learn greek and hebrew so that you can communicate soundly and earn respect among your peers and your contemporaries the desire to want to be seen nothing is wrong intrinsically with those things except for the fact that if that becomes a replacement for your love for jesus then you are not in ministry you can be building branches you are not in ministry you can be having mega conferences you are not in ministry they can call you apostle joshua selman you are still not in ministry because ministry is not defined by the flamboyancy of the activity and yet on the other hand you can love jesus sincerely and all through the lifetime of your ministry you will only pastor 50 people now our world today will look at you as a junior man of god is that not what we say joshua selman is coming clear the way for him these are the guys that are making things happen unfortunately and the 50 member man who has a depth of love for god that the joshua selmans do not come close to we push them aside and say these are the ones that are deserving of honor it's a human thing unfortunately but these are the people you see the day we stand before god eh there will be surprises that day because some of us that everybody is clapping for us thinking we are standing you will be surprised where we will stand in that ranking and you will see one mama who nobody knows who has been an intercessor given the ministry to pray for joshua selman and is the reason why he succeeded that mama will stand before jesus and he will say well done and you say what did mama do she never had a ministry she didn't register any church with cac and god will say cac nonsense this woman was in more mini she was more effective in ministry than any other person when i learned this thing about god it did something to my spiritual understanding i've shared it here in one of the sessions of our conference when i was preaching for a pfn crusade in Kano, daddy years ago and i called this woman out by word of knowledge i'm ministering to her and she just comes out sincere doesn't speak very good english and she's, she's you know she speaks in house and i'm about to pray for her and the lord grants me a revelation and then this woman tells me she finishes her bible every 15 days and I'm standing before this woman what in the world is this so what did I come to do here here is a big man of God coming to stand and doing all the things that we do and here is a quiet woman seeking prayer can I tell you some of the most powerful people I have met in the spirit are nameless faceless people And they will come to you quietly i remember an elderly woman years ago who gave me one advice one that became a strong foundation for my life today when you find those kinds of people respect them honor them these are people with with depths of of relationship with jesus their love for him I've had the honor of people of knowing a few people who Boko Haram killed and some of them at the point of dying it was with joy and laughter they said if you are doing it do it fast it's too small a reason and I thought to myself 
God, can I do this? It's not about social media, as wonderful as it is. If you cannot die for God, if you can only live for God, you are lying. True love is not how much you can live for me. It's how much you can die. Even secular people use it. When a, a, a gentleman likes a lady, whether he knows what he's saying or not, he says, I will die for you. And she says, really? She will not clap for him for saying, I will live for you. What do you mean you will live for me? But if you say you will die for me, aha. Uh -huh. Are we together? Do you know that the Christianity we received in Nigeria and across Africa came through the blood of many? The national anthem says that the labor of our heroes past shall not be in vain. It is true even for scripture that there are people who literally died. Paul got to a point where he said, for, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. God is helping to redefine our priorities because we're going to pray as we prepare to wrap up, to go back and say, Lord, search my love life. This thing I've been doing, is it true that I really love you? Or is it just because I want to expand my church? What I call evangelism, is it a sincere desire to have more souls come or is it just because i want dominion and influence we have to be sincere whether we like it or not ladies and gentlemen jesus is coming soon i know that we don't hear it again but let me remind you for some of you after a very long time he's still coming nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. If I came into this place and I found five people, I stand by the God of heaven, I will preach with all my heart. To me, it does not make any difference. It's just because when you get to certain positions, humanly speaking, there are certain levels of honor that people will not allow you to go below. And it's sincere. There is room like that. Priesthood gives you that privilege of experiencing honor. But you see, when I stand before the mirror and I look at myself, my prayer, I talk to myself many times and I say, Joshua Selman, remember where God brought you from. Let the world keep doing the clapping while you keep walking in wisdom. For some of you here, you have forgotten where he brought you from. You have even forgotten about him. Do you know ministry can become an idol that the God who is supposed to be the epicenter of the ministry is not yet there and yet you are doing ministry. My call for you is a call for repentance this morning. There are many people who really truly need to return back to spiritual things. I agree you're a prayer warrior, but let us vet your heart for God. What is the motivation behind being a prayer warrior? Oh, I found out that if you're a prayer warrior, people respect you, so I got into it. Why are you praying? I'm praying for more power. What if power does not come? No, it cannot come. God can't fail me. <laughs> Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest, and take him to a mountain that I will show you. The Bible says, Abraham rose up early. Is it in your Bible? And he dragged Isaac, placed him on the altar, and carried the knife. I don't know what I'm going to tell Sarah when I go back, but let me prove my love for Jesus, or my love for God. If God tells you to empty your account now, will you bind that voice saying it's a demon or will you obey? You are a true lover of God when you have lost the ability to tell him no. And be careful when you say, God, I give you everything because he will test every one of that statement. The God that I know. Lord, take my car. And he says, excellent, now. You can tell God, take money that somebody gave me. He will wait until your arrears have been paid. After you have collected your arrears of five months, he will come to you with clarity that cannot be doubted. Can you sacrifice this? It's not about the money. He does not need it. It's about the idols in your heart. Man of God, if God tells you now to close your assembly, literally to close it, while COVID was going on, you know, we didn't have service from March till December. 
And I remember someone lovingly calling me and saying, Apostle, I've been in ministry for a while. Oh, this thing you are doing is suicidal. By December, you will call on members and nobody will come again. And I laughed. I said, really? You do not know the joy that I have now. No ministration, no preaching. I've not had this time for myself in a long time. I won't waste this opportunity. This is my time with God. This is my time to rest. They are the sheep of his pasture. Who told you that? How did they come in the first place? If I call them, it is out of responsibility, not insecurity. I told them, I said, give me rest. I didn't die on the cross. My face is not on the crucifix. I won't put that kind of burden on myself. I love God's people, but not to that degree of allowing, pretending like it is love when it is self that is motivating it to protect what is my own so that my reputation will not be lost. Perhaps people will interpret it for backsliding. It is still self. What do people say? Self. Hallelujah. In this kingdom, we gain things by having the ability to be able to lose them. The moment you are protective of things, that very, that very state will make you lose it. Are we together? There is nothing God has given me today that if he calls for, I will not give him. Believe me, I'm not just, this is not a preacher, you are spiritual people. You can't imagine the things he has, he has demanded that I've said, yes sir. It is you with all joy. Do you know for many years, God would not allow me buy a car. I needed it for ministry, but for some reason, I would bless people and do all this. But I remember one time, you have heard my story. I stood in front of this car stand, negotiated with them. I wanted to buy a car that would be useful for traveling around. And God asked me what I was doing there. And I left. True story. There was a time my account was hacked. Millions were taken out of it. And I was having, I mean, the bank, that morning it was like fire on the mountain in the bank. And the people, ah, you have to, all the people who stay with you must sign an undertaking. There must be police station. I said, for what? Oh, we have to check this, an indictment on the integrity of the bank, the bank manager, my account officer, several people. We now sat down for a meeting. And the meeting was, okay, who do you know? The last, how many, you know how bankers ask you all kinds of questions. And the Holy Spirit asked me, what am I doing here? I'm trying to protect it. I mean, millions just vanished on a Sunday. Um, the person, it was somebody who stole using InterSwitch. All these guys who do all these things. And then while I was there, the Holy Spirit asked me, is it my money or is God's money? I said, it's his own. I said, if I trust him, I should stand up and walk out. And I told him, I said, this is the end of it. Thank you very much. No, 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 no. I said, it's my money. It's over. <laughs> Case closed. Don't tell me you love God. What When you say you love God, let me see the sacrifice on your altar. If there is nothing there, just keep quiet. You are talking absolute nonsense. You provide the fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. We are going to pray. You provide the spirit. And I will open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. I remember leaving the bank and such joy and peace that I could not describe just flooded me. Having parted away with millions that will never come. And I was happy. I remember years ago in Port Harcourt when the Lord gave me an assignment to carry everything I had and sow it as a seed. I didn't have much but it was still precious to me. I put everything plus my rechargeable lantern, zipped everything and laid my hands on it and prayed in tongues for three hours non-stop. When I was done, I dragged it to church. There was an overflow and I sat down outside and God decided to disgrace me. As people were dropping their seats, he asked me to wait. When everybody was done, he now said I can come. True story. True story. That was how I held my bag. Imagine somebody coming behind with your bag. That was really Isaac. 
the one you have been given is Ishmael. That's why you gave it first. The day you give Isaac, you will know it was Isaac you gave. When I dragged that bag and I dropped it at the altar, something died in me. I went back and I sat down outside and I, it now occurred to me what God told Abraham. You have done this for me. I swear by my name that in blessing there are people who are operating under a sworn blessing you don't know what moves them and opens doors like this it's beyond just prayer request it's beyond just having faith and believing God they have done something with God that has made God to vow a vow God has opened doors that only him can close because of sacrifice are we together this is true I made up my mind that all that this all that will be required while I was in Zaria people gave me all kinds of suggestions why don't you relocate go abroad do all this there are many wonderful things what is Zaria for God's sake you have what are you this is where he wants me to be when God asked me to move to Abuja I struggled with God for three years three three years God is this you let me not make any decision I'm not I'm comfortable where you have put me and I'm I love you for three years hallelujah I have met all kinds of things our plane was the last to leave London when when we arrived and they declared lockdown it was the last if I delayed, I would have been trapped in UK for three months, roaming around. Doing what will I be doing there? It's not my place of assignment. What kind of vacation will you do for three months? As soon as I arrived, I remember them calling us and saying, all the people who were in that plane, most of them had COVID. And they said, wherever you are, report yourself so that they would check you because by that time it had gone so far I moved in the midst of people with COVID there is no reason why I should not have had it no reason no human reason not just from UK all through interacting with them these are realities that only happen to lovers there are things that if you don't love God you would think people are lying God will carry the prayer point of someone and give you as a love gift the same way a man can buy a house and an estate and say my dear wife for standing with me I just want to tell you that I love you and you'll be angry and say who is she that you are giving her an estate ask the man who she is for some of you as you begin it is not difficult to get the land for the church it is not difficult to get the money all these things we make it look as if God's power it is our lack of love for him by the time you allow him to purify the corruption that is in your heart and you are motivated by love believe me there are many things you will not need to pray for when the lover arises the Bible says jealousy is the rage of a man there is no responsible husband that someone will touch and be intimidating his wife and the man will be watching when you truly become that bride indeed then you see how responsible that husband is he will open doors for you beyond imagination this is my testimony and this is consistent with scripture the things God is doing in and through my life today is not necessarily a measure of competence and human manipulation and skills for no man can do these things except God be with him. There are some results that are not within the realm of men. You cannot have it except God is with you. Enugu, my message to you this afternoon is that you return back to the place of love and passion. Some of you, that is how you started. Somewhere along the line, you got distracted and you started focusing on other things, reputation, you started focusing on church ministry can be an idol spiritual activities can become an idol except and unless it is motivated by love and then 
more than being motivated by love or in addition to being motivated by love your desire must be to see Jesus glorified John chapter 3 and verse 30 he was speaking with Nicodemus and when he was done the disciples of John came to him and said look what is happening and John made a powerful statement that I may decrease so that he will increase please look up I'm wrapping up I want you to look at this pulpit everyone please give let me your attention my Bible and all that I have here is on this top this is what is carrying my Bible so as far as we are concerned when you say a pulpit this is the center of focus is that true but it is impossible for you to look at this pulpit and ignore what is holding it are we together this is how you are Jesus Christ who is the head of the church is the center of focus however it is impossible to lift him and remain on the ground as you lift him you are also lifted John chapter 17 and verse 1 Jesus lifted up his eyes unto heaven and prayed and said father the hour is come glorify now thy son that thy son may bring glory unto you when your life is committed to revealing Jesus not revealing Joshua Selman not revealing your abilities my prayer every time I pray and cry to God is that when people see me sincerely beyond seeing a man or a celebrity or whatever they call thank God for those commendations but I want them to see Jesus truly to see Jesus to see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 man of God bury your reputation behind the cross bury your desire for fame and self aggrandizement before behind the cross when your life becomes all about Jesus to love him to serve him to reveal him and to glorify him then every other activity becomes a worthy tool your mic now becomes a worthy tool your Bible study becomes a worthy tool your singing becomes a worthy tool only at that point are you in ministry motivated by love intended to see Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified whether it is true singing whether it is true marriage whether it is true business whether it is true giving you can give to the church and all you are doing is political donation that is not ministry that is just announcing yourself using the house of God you can be in the welfare department running up and down and as far as God is concerned you were not in church and you say how can you say I was not in church I was up and doing it's even because of me that there's something for the ministers to eat the motivation was never out of love for Jesus please keep this simple definition and let this be what you learned this afternoon so next time you say you are in ministry if you think you are in ministry just because you carry a title of pastor or apostle or prophet by the authority of scripture I'm telling you you are not in ministry or if you think you are in ministry because of many invitations you are wrong if you think you are in ministry because you have a crowd of people listening to you that may be well intentioned but you are still wrong if you think you are in ministry because you are growing material blessings are coming if you think you are in ministry because you are dishing out the word of God with power and grace or praying or fasting you are not in ministry ladies and gentlemen the biblical index for measuring ministry I repeat is your love for Jesus and your desire to see him lifted and glorified full stop any other thing is of the devil apostle God led me to give three million naira one million naira five million naira for this program congratulations but before that giving becomes ministry thank you for the money but let us check what was the motivation behind it I love Jesus with all my heart and it is an honor to be a contributor to what he's doing now 
to what end is it so that they will know you are a rich man or to see that you are a big man that is politics not ministry apostle joshua selman has come into enugu all my preaching revelation it doesn't matter who fell down who rolled on the floor who was healed from the realm of the spirit nobody will clap for you for that they will now pass everything through the lens of the purity of God's word what motivated his coming to Enugu it's part of a spiritual adventure to expand influence nonsense you only wasted your time I Isaiah was already preaching when there was a call in heaven who shall we send can you imagine that forever my desire has remained and will always be by God's grace listen if you have any prayer that you pray for me in the secret place beyond praying for power oh God expand him thank God for those prayers let them come later if I have any prayer requests in my life is this one prayer request that my love for Jesus will remain intact and that my desire will always and remain to glorify him whether expansion comes, whether influence comes, that is, those things are secondary, even tertiary. Are you ready to pray? But you see, when you get to this state in the spirit, stand back and see what God begins to do in your life. You will command power in dimensions that will surprise you. You will command influence. You will lay up gold as dust. Believe me, I know what I am saying. Indeed, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it come into the heart of man what God has in store for them that love him. Pastors in Enugu, Church of the Lord Jesus Christ in Enugu, this is the Spirit of God speaking to you this afternoon. There are many of us who need to repent. Some of you, after this conference, you need to start your own retreat and go back and say, God, purge me. I love you sincerely, but I confess that there is somewhere locked up in my motivation, the desire for competition. Something within me is crying to be the voice in Enugu. Lord, prune that desire and let it be that it is you and you alone. Jesus revealed jesus glorified you will hear me say if that becomes a theme of your life you are a minister indeed now your songs will carry power now your giving will carry power now your preaching will carry power no wonder many of our fathers of faith can stand and just bless our our daddy here can stand and just say god bless you and someone will leave with the gates of his destiny open because the power flows from love the power is not mechanical you can see our fathers of faith like Baba Deboe, they will stand and just say in Jesus name, may God bless you. Nothing special, nothing, you know, flamboyant and you will return back. And we are here jumping and rapping and ranting a lot of things with a corrupted motive. And we wonder why with that dissipation of energy, little or nothing is happening. Because love is the final gate that allows anything to pass from God to you. If that any gate can be manipulated, but the love gate is that one gate that will vet the purity of everything you do. And if you have found one thing, your work will die with you there. Are we ready to pray? Let's take a few minutes to pray. Don't be distracted. Whilst you are seated or standing, whatever position, there are two prayer points. We'll pray and then we're done. Prepare for the night. The first prayer is a repentance prayer. It's a prayer of repentance. Repentance prayer. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. And then the Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, the Bible says God is faithful and just to forgive us. We are going to cry and say, Lord, forgive me for the corruption that has motivated what I do that I call ministry great or small I repent go ahead and pray let it be from the depth of your heart let it be from the depth of your heart let it be from the depth of your heart about you it's all about you 
It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Help me, oh God. Someone is praying. Cast that golden crown and cry to your maker. Lord, touch my motif. What has led me to pray? What has led me to fast? What has led me to study the Bible? What has led me to listen to messages online? Am I just accumulating revelation so that I will be a man of God with power? Or do I truly love Jesus? What is the motivation behind my evangelism? Is it just more members? Or to see the heart of the Father pleased? Why are we organizing the conferences that we organize? Why are we organizing the conventions? Why are we organizing church service, midweek service, prayer meetings? What are we really looking for? Hallelujah. Just one more minute, we're wrapping up. I love you, Lord. It's an old song. And I lift my hands to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice. Take joy, my King. In what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound. In the name of Jesus. Father, this is a moment of sober reflection, a moment of sincere admitter that there are idols in our hearts. And oftentimes we found ourselves being motivated by other things other than our love for Jesus and our desire to see him lifted. But after this morning service, we pray that you are lifted in our hearts. In the name of Jesus. It is our prayer, oh God, that you be lifted above all other God. We lay our crown and worship all oh, glorious one. We praise your name. We lay our crown and sing it for the last time. All oh, glorious God. All oh, glorious God, we praise your name. We lay our crown and worship you. Amen. As you come tonight, please do well to come with your prayer requests. Let's come and trust the God of wonders to visit us tonight. I want you to come with your heart open, ready to receive graces and mantles. I'm going to be sharing with you something very powerful tonight. And then we'll have the opportunity to pray for the sick and speak over your life. But more importantly, to impart upon you that grace that moves you to the next dimension in the spirit. And I pray that God will show us mercy. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart 
that no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.